Hey guys, Exec here. If you didn't know, I participated in the H1Z1 Invitational Tournament at TwitchCon where I placed 7th and 12th. And I'm going to go over both of the games I played in and go over what my plan was, how things went, and maybe where I could have done things a little bit differently. For those of you looking for some tips to win at H1Z1 Battle Royale, I'm hoping this video is a little bit helpful as I'll go over the routes I took and why I took them. And just explain my overall thought process. I didn't win either game at the Invitational, but I think with a little bit better luck, I easily could have placed even higher in both games or, or even won. The first thing I want to talk about, though, is the tournament area. Here, here's a picture of the tournament setup. The setups weren't bad. They had a Razer Death Adder, Razer Keyboard, Kraken 7.1 headset, and the FPS on the machines were pretty good. However, they weren't anywhere near as good as my setup when I stream. They didn't have 120 hertz monitors. They didn't allow you to disable mouse excel. The mouse pad was small and much slicker than the QCK mouse pad that I have. And the headsets were really bassy and muddy. That being said, everyone knew the setups ahead of time and knew they would be playing with something that wasn't their norm. The reason why I'm ultimately pointing this out is it affected everyone's play style. With a lot of money on the line, people were going to play passively already. And then just, this just added more when you don't have as much confidence in your shot. With that being said, let's hop into the first game, and I end up spawning fairly far north, but I drop into an area of Pleasant Valley that I'm a really big fan of. I hit up this area a lot when I stream. It's got a lot of good loot, but typically has a lot less people in the area fighting over it. Most people go to the eastern side of Pleasant Valley, or they'll go to the police station, which is on the southwest side of Pleasant Valley, but the area that I like to go to where I'm at right now um, has less people. It'll still have a lot of people that are there, randomly because it is random but i would say on the average it's just a lot less competitive overall and i end up looting the entire area and grab a lot of stuff including an ak which is pretty meaningful towards the end of the game but after i grabbing the loot i checked the south side of town to see if there was any cars because three cars can spawn in this area but unfortunately i didn't see any so I had to go without a car once the circle popped up I started to make my move south as the circle was pretty far south on the map and I ended up running all the way to the south edge of the map and even walked into the gas. The reason why I did this is most of the time less people are on this side of the map. It's the southern side of the map. Most people aren't typically in the middle part of the map. As people continue to die, the circle ends up bringing me back up north and I either have to go over the mountain or to the side of it. I ultimately decide to go to the side of it because there's a police car that was in between me and that mountain. And I didn't want to get attacked out in the open by it. They could just jump out of the car, shotgun me, and it would be over. So, And also, going over the mountain isn't my favorite play either because if you get spotted up there by someone before they spot you, you have very little cover. If I get spotted in the trees, I have a little bit more time to figure out things typically. So I take what I feel is the safest route, and I keep riding the gas in, but just try to stay away from the mountain. Once things start to settle down, there's still 20 plus people left and I end up getting out of the gas and entering the circle in probably the worst possible spot. I thought I was dead here. The, I exit the gas with less than 75 HP and there's a guy who sees me and he's behind a tree. So I'm out in the open and he's behind a tree. This was my first fight in the game too and I'm pretty much potato here with the AK, but somehow I drop diesel and ends up being diesel. I was one more shot away from death too. I was below 25 HP, but I end up surviving. The AK pretty much saved my life there. If I had an AR, I think we would have been dead. A shotgun could have been usable there, but me running into him into that spot was terrible timing and could have gone a ton worse. Easily could have died. Easily could have just placed, you know, 20th and round 20th and been done. And I get by and survive. A bit later, more people have died and cars keep driving by me, but I do my best pretty much to hide and not let them see me. And then luckily Sirius Allen gets out of his car near me and I end up getting pr a pretty easy kill. He went to go camp in the bushes and end up shooting him there. And it was a pretty big kill at the time too because I think this was um, when there was 11 people left. So, you know, top 10 at the tournament gets money and getting that kill without him seeing me being pretty easy was, was nice. However, the gas decides that the next shrink that it's going to make is it's going to jump much farther away from me. I'm literally on the worst side of the circle. I have to run the most to get over to the gas. I'm not gonna run out in the open before the, the gas has shrunk. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna try to wait this out and hope a lot more people die. And 
as the circle begins to shrink, I run up to the car just because I'm like, maybe I can take this car and ride this in, but it's unfortunately out of gas, so I'm not using the car. I have to run in, and I hope the last people alive just aren't on my side of the circle. Like, I'm hoping more people are on the other side, and I'm just kind of by myself. The second I start running in, though, I get shot by Trick2G with an AK, and things are, are just, you know, off on the wrong foot already. And I'm, tr I'm having to run in, and the gas is chasing me. So even if I decide to stop and kill him, and let's say I do kill him... I've got gas doing damage to me, and let's say he hits me once or twice. Like, we're in trouble here. Like, I can't I can't have this fight here. I have to get into the... I have to get out of the gas and have a fight out of the gas. As I'm running in, too, he actually hits me in the side of the head because you can see I start bleeding. The tactical helmet stops the first bullet from the AK and AR, but you'll bleed as a result. So now I'm bleeding and running in, and then I see someone ahead of me, and it's just a, it's just a clusterfuck. I kill Rakana ahead of me, but I'm still losing HP. I'm now in the top 10, which is awesome. Trick2G gets in a fight with someone on my right side. Then I notice two people on my left. One gets in a car and drives by me. The reason why they got in the car is because Mo was shooting up, up uh, at them up on my left side, up on the hill on the left side. And ultimately, I settled down by a tree with five HP left. The gas is finally stopped, but Mo tags me from the left before I can I can heal up. End up placing 7th here and pick up 5200 bucks. So, what could I have done differently in this game? I don't really think there was that much. When I died here, there was Trick2G, who was on ultimately on my right side, who was shooting at me the, the entire time. He ends up killing somebody on my right side after he was shooting at me. Two cars end up driving by me, ultimately, as I'm running in, like running into the circle. Mo was on my left side when he killed me. He was the one that was shooting at the cars or the car that drove by me. There was five to six people on my side of the circle with eight people left, and there's not much you can really do about that. I mean, that's Battle Royale ultimately in a, in a nutshell. Normally at the end of the game, you don't see this many people near each other, but with money on the line, people played a bit more passive, and so you end up seeing clusters at the end like this. And the only thing I feel I could have done differently is proned when I went to bandage. So... I'm at 5 HP, I'm bleeding, I have to stick a heal, right? It doesn't matter what I'm going to do, I have to stick the heal. There's nothing I can really do other than stick the heal. I'm not gonna, If someone shoots at me, I'm not going to move because if I move, I'm just going to die anyway, right? I'm going to bleed out, so I have to stick it. I could have proned and maybe hid from somebody while I was healing and just survived long enough to have somebody else get killed. But at the end of the day, there was too many people near me. Mo was coming downhill towards me, so he probably would have seen me. And I ended up freezing the side of my screen and notice I can see Trick2G or somebody on my right side running up to me. Like, I was just surrounded. It was, it was a mess. I felt I got lucky in the fight against Diesel, but got pretty unlucky in the cluster at the end considering where, where all the people were. But again, that's Battle Royale. It's extremely random, and the best thing you can do is try to put yourself in the best possible position and adapt to the randomness. And you're definitely going to lose a lot of games. You're going to die being shot in the back. You're going to be... You're going to die looting people you're gonna die to really silly stuff that you don't have any control over and that's what makes battle royale battle royale and that's ultimately what makes it fun to me the the randomness of the game so all things considered i'm pretty happy with seventh place got 5200 dollars out of it so let's go ahead and move on to the second game i end up spawning at g5 in this game and start parachuting towards one of my favorite passive spots on the map, it's east of Cranberry. I go to this spot all the time in games on my stream, and rarely do people ever go there. It's it's easily empty 75% of the time. I end up running here and getting all the loot to myself. I grab 10 plus kits, a bunch of ammo, a bunch of AR ammo, shoddy, molotovs. I get pretty good here. I'm, I'm set. The only problem with this spot is it doesn't seem to spawn an AK that often, and there's no cars that spawn at this particular spot. However, south of this area is a church and can spawn multiple cars if you get lucky. I usually head down there if the circle spawns on the south side of the map or if I feel I have enough time. The circle that shows up, though, ends up being really far north. I could go down to the church and try to get a car, but if some, for some reason someone jacked the spark plugs or took the car, I'd have a long run on my hands. And even with the amount of kits I have, it would be close. It'd be close to dying. So... Not going for the car, I think, ends up being the smartest decision. As you'll see, the circle starts to move way, way northwest and just keeps heading away from me. As I'm heading towards the circle, I get a good spot on someone up on the hill and was just expecting to shoot them as they kept running, but oddly, they came right at me. 
ends up being CDN, and I don't know if he saw me or what, but luckily I get to jump on him with a shotgun and kill him. He also brings me a bunch of first aid kits, and at this point in time, I know I'm not going to make it into the circle, but I'm actually okay with that. I have a ton of first aid kits and can stay in the gas for a long time. This lets other people die while I'm heading into the circle. It makes it pretty unlikely I'll die to someone shooting me in the gas. What I want to do in this game is ultimately attack from the north or northwest side of the circle. So I start heading north as much as I can to try to wrap around the northeast side and end up on the northwest side of the circle. But the gas just keeps moving northwest and away from me. And the reason why I want to be on the north or northwest side of the circle is because, again, less like it's less likely that people are going to be there. They'll be fighting on the south side of Pleasant Valley or coming from other areas. But the circle just isn't kind enough. It just keeps running away from me and I'm just I'm constantly running and never really entering or attacking from the side that I really want to um, attack from. And I just end up entering on the east northeast side. So in reality, I decided to enter the circle and could have just camped in the gas if I wanted. I had around 10 first aid kits left after I did all that running in the gas and could have spent five minutes in the gas just kind of chilling. This was an option. But after placing 7th in the last game, I didn't want to camp the gas. Should I have? Maybe. I know a lot of people at this stage of the game were camping in the gas. They were trying to hide from everybody. And running into them in the gas is a terrible scenario. Imagine shooting at somebody in the gas, um, having a fight with someone in the gas. It doesn't really work out very well. And a lot of times, some you can see people in the gas, but they can't see you and vice versa. It depends on the angle. So it can get kind of messy if you have to fight someone in the gas. So it's not like a guaranteed place to just hide. But... After entering the circle, I end up killing Angry Pug, who only had a pistol, and a bit later I kill the odd one up on my right. So I ended up attacking Angry Pug because he looked like he only had a pistol, and I don't want him sneaking up on my side of the circle later and killing me. There's a lot of people left and a lot of trees. It's hard to keep track of everybody. So the odd one kill is also important to point out. You can see that I've decided to stay on the east side of the circle. And with how many people are left, I need to make room for myself. There's a lot of people still left. He was visible enough for me to kill him, so I took the shots and I killed him. If I let him live and he spots me, he becomes a major problem, so I decided to deal with it. I always generally will take, if I have a free kill, if I feel there's a really easy kill, I will generally take it. Especially if I feel, especially if they're close enough to me to be a problem. So that's something that I always do in my Battle Royale games. I end up having a problem here though as a car moves up on my left side and stops. At this point, I can either engage the car out in the open, which is typically not a good idea. If he's in the car, he can see me pretty easily in third and would have a good opportunity to catch me coming over the hill. He could just drive at me and fly out with the shotgun. So I decide to put the tree between myself and him and just see what he does. I have to stay focused on this guy pretty heavily because he could see me and start throwing mollies or he could decide to drive up. Like I said, with the shotgun, I need to be ready. This ultimately ends up getting me killed though. OP SCT actually goes back to the same spot where Odd One was and shoots me in the back as I'm throwing up a kit and moving a little bit. He kills me so fast, I really don't have any time to react. He didn't end up headshotting me or anything like that. He just ends up shooting me four times in the body and I die. But it was extremely fast uh, and it just didn't have enough time to actually react and get away with him or get away from him. And with the headphones I was wearing. It sounded like he was right behind me with the sound. It was so loud, so bassy that I just, I figured he was right behind me just shooting me from another tree. But it actually turns out that he went back to where uh, Odd One was at and shot me from that tree. So it was kind of disappointing round as I was doing pretty well, but had a choice to make. Go over that hill and attack the car, just run into the gas and hide for a few minutes with my eight kits left or hold the position. In a normal game, you wouldn't expect to have another person shoot you from the exact same spot where you just killed somebody, unless they were grouping or something like that. But this game had a ton of people left in this stage of the circle, and ultimately there just wasn't a lot of space for everybody. If I decide to run into the gas, it wasn't a guarantee either, as there could have been someone camping Look and looking at the VOD from the caster's point of view, there was definitely people ca uh, camping in the gas at that time, and... And at the end of the day, it's really tough to be dropped out like that, but I felt really good about my games and ended up leaving with $5,200. I don't feel like there was a situation where there was just an obvious choice where I should have made this move in, in both cases where I died. It was pretty much just being shot in the back, and that stuff happens in Battle Royale. You do your best to position yourself to stop those sort of things, but 
There's a lot of people left at the end and the, of the game, and you can't stop everything. It's pretty much impossible. You just have to de uh, you just have to adapt the best way you can. If you die, you die, and you go play again. You can't count how many times I've won games where everyone else attacks each other, and I swoop in and kill the last one or two guys and end up winning. And in fact, Grimms, who ended up winning this game, just kills the last person. He played a good avoidance game, didn't get swarmed or attacked by multiple people, and stuck around till the end, and he ends up winning. One of my viewers did statistics on both games, and I was tied for first with the most kills, which was six. And I was also tied for first in the best overall placement. So my average, pla my, my placements of seventh and twelfth overall average, if you take the average of both of those, I placed, I was tied for first in consistent placement. So I was the, one of the most consistent players or tied for first for being the most consistent placing player at the tournament. Obviously Ninja and Grimm's won, but if you take all the games as a whole and average them, I was the most consistent player in both games. So, and no one placed top 10 in either game, or I'm sorry, no, no one placed top 10 in both games. And I was two spots away from placing top 10 in, in both games. So and it was the closest person to do it. So when you look at it statistically, I actually had really, really good games. And imagine what, ha imagine what would have happened if, you know, I wasn't shot by a guy in the back and was able to sneak, you know, sneak in a little bit farther. We would have had, you know, two top ten uh, finishes, and who knows? Maybe I would have, you know, even gotten top five or first. I mean, I know I can win a lot of games. So, again, statistically, had some really, really good games. Can't really be upset with myself. It wasn't really any major decision that I felt was just a terrible choice. And at the end of the day, that's really the best way you have to look at it. You can't be upset if you know, you die in a battle royale in a stupid way because it's going to happen. It happens to everybody. It happens to the best players in the game. It happens to the worst. That's what makes battle royale battle royale. The tournament was ultimately a ton of fun. I met a lot of awesome people. I got $5,200 out of it, so I can't really be... How can I be upset, right? Hope this video was ultimately informative and entertaining for you guys, and I really appreciate you watching. Thanks.